getting the dogs all riled up. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, see, they do listen to me. Hi. Hi, everyone. It is definitely joyful, joyful Friday. Hello, good morning. It's so nice to see you all. Um, and uh, we, let's see, it's Friday, which normally is a joy day. Uh, joy meaning we're working on our crooked joy. But as I'm just getting back to in the saddle, so to speak, um, I decided that I wanted to do this great image um, from a card that I received from our friend Nancy Kuliga. So I got this when I was in rehab. Hi, Loretta. Hi, Rosie. Good morning. Hi, Leslie. Um, so I got this card from Nancy when I was in rehab because I, if you're new, I, um, I broke my hip and I ended up in the hospital emergency and then I had to go to rehab. So I got this and I was in rehab on my birthday. And I don't know, she just made it right on time because it was a birthday message. Happy birthday, birthday girl from Nancy Kuliga. And then it says, and I want to wish you a speedy recovery. Isn't that great? And I was like, I want to know where she got this image. But because I was in rehab, I was like... Um, okay, uh, I could get on, but I wasn't like really near my machine or anything. So I did a search and I looked and looked and looked and I finally found the image. And it's actually an image. I'm going to show you the image on uh, Design Space. It's a uh, number. If you do image numbers, it's M4 seven. Now, I don't know if it's a zero. I think it's a zero. 7016BA5. But it's also an image from a uh, continuing artist, that a uh, contributing artist that I really like. Her name is Kat Madeira. And um, if you go in and you find her, or you can find any of hers, or if you're following her, you can go to her profile. So here's her profile. She's got a lot of great, just basic images. She's also, I think, from the UK. So there's a lot of um, UK things too. Um, and let's see, I haven't seen them. Oh, look, she does rolled flowers and I haven't seen the, the B one yet, but she seems to have quite a few. Look at the old fashioned cassette tapes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's probably our age, you know? Um, and there it is, there it is. And I wanted to show you that because she has a number of these images that um, are great for shadow boxes. Like look at this sunflower one. So cute. And then if you just don't like the sunflower, you want to just do the bee. She has the bee here too. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Just so you know, her name is Kat Madeira and she is in design space as part of the contributing artist program. <laughs> However, when I went to plan for this project, I was looking at an old... All right. Now, now they're getting obnoxious. Um, I, was, I was looking at an old shadow box that I did. I wouldn't say old. It's maybe about two years old, which was this a leprechaun that had all of these different red hair layers. So there's like one, two, three, four... If you count the the yellow five, so there's one, two, three, four, five layers on the hair. And um, I remembered that I got this from a place that I want to show you. Uh, it's one of Sarah's designs. Oh, I don't know who Sarah is. Is Sarah this woman that runs this? It's called my3dsvg.com. So if you like the idea of shadow boxes, but maybe you're not into the bees um, and you want to see others, you can come here. It's my 3D SVG. Okay. It's not 3D SVG. It's my 3D SVG.com. And she sells in just about any, look at all of the states. 
Um, I'm sure she must have Massachusetts in there, but, um, but she does all kinds of things, holidays and Valentine's, Mother's Day, spring, summer, fall, winter, all of that. And, um, she does offer one free file every month. Um, this month it is a sunflower, which is very pretty too. Here it is, May Freebie. It's actually more than one. Um, so freebie. So this is the this is her May flower, which is uh, a sunflower, which is beautiful, and she also gives you this one here. It's very similar to how we downloaded the file from uh, the day before yesterday, or was it the day? Yeah, the day before yesterday when we did Dreaming Tree one, you would just uh, download the zip file. Either you would manually unzip it or you'd have your computer automatically unzip it. And, um, and then you would upload it to your, so I'm gonna show you that, just download this one. Now it will be in my downloads file, which is a mess, but just so you can see, you know, where is it? Mm, 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 mm. I wish this went in order of like when I downloaded it. Maybe I can do that over here. September 10th. Okay. Yeah, I did. Whew. No, I didn't. What? What's going on? Um, Flamingos. What's this? Oh, different thing. Different thing. All right. I'm getting off track. But anyway, that's how you would do it. And then you would re-upload um, to Design Space, okay? So what I'm gonna show you today is um, how to turn an image that is just a plain image meant for uh, meant for shadow boxes into a card like my friend Nancy did. So, um, so I wanted to show you that. Let me move some of this stuff out here. So the first thing that you have to know about these types of files is that they are layered, which means that you are going to be cutting out a number of layers. Now for this particular one, you need to, uh, what did I do with that? Oh, I don't know what I do with my little bits. I, got, I might have to cut some more stripes, but you need to find all the paper you need because <laughs> I know that's weird, but, but in this particular case, there is like four different color uh, yellows and then there's black white and green um, and I noticed on my friend's card if you look really really closely it appears that she has filled in first of all she filled in the the um, Le the petals and the wings with something that's sort of translucent. But also look in the back, she used silver and gold, probably because she couldn't find um, enough of the yellow color, which is a challenge. It's a, it's a big challenge to find yellow. Um, I believe that I ended up using some basil cardstock, which you may or may not be aware of that vendor, but um, there is a vendor called American Crafts AC crafts american crafts and they're out of utah and um they have they have several different lines of paper one of one, one of them is basil um it's a thicker paper it cuts thicker so you have to choose uh, wisely when you're cutting and um and you can buy it by the sheet usually at like Michael's or Joann's or something like that. Their other brand, which I find easy to cut, is just called American Crafts or AC Cardstock. So these are, both of these brands are by the same company. Um, I think a lot of times people think these are all different companies, but if you go under the American Crafts uh, website, you'll see all their brands and, and um, it will show you, I don't know if I can do it here, American Crafts, there it is. Okay, American Crafts, all right, and um, they have all these brands, Basil being one of them. Basil is very thick, but they do also have um, American Crafts, which I think cuts better on, uh, on, your, on your machines. Okay, and American Crafts has all these uh, these textures, but then they have all these colors, right? Look at that. So you can buy a pack of them, or you can buy a, like a pre-assembled pack, which is what I like. 
Um, so this is called American Cross Variety Cardstock Pack. This is the summer one, and you get all of these colors. So this is, for me, a really good buy, especially if I can get it on sale. There's 60 sheets, 20 colors, so you get three sheets of every color. And you can see it comes in spring, summer, winter, fall, and also has, like, valentines and stuff like that. Now, this is not to be confused with um, Joanne's brand. See, so a lot of companies, whoops, sorry. A lot of companies go out and they approach these dealers. You know, like when you go to uh, Costco and Costco says, gee, I want to bring all, I want to bring your product to all of our members, but we want it to be labeled with our signature, Costco signature. Um, and that's what Joann's has done here. So if you go here and you did shopping and you did paper crafts, paper to shop paper 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 designer paper crafting i don't know what that means design oh here it is cardstock and craft paper okay shop all you can see that they have put together their own cardstock groups and of course i'm not going to be able to see it oh here we go so, okay, this is one. It's called Park Lane. It's very similar to AC cardstock. And so, and I think, I believe it is actually assembled by the folks over at, um, at, AC cardstock. So you're getting basically for less money. So here is, you're going to get 60 sheets, just like we did, right? 60 sheets. You're going to get all these colors and you're going to save a lot of money. So it's $15 and 39 cents. So just kind of wanted you, if you're looking for cardstock um, and you think it's a, a kind of a deer, the price is kind of a little too rich for your blood, check out other uh, venues. So like Joann's, they do have their own. And you might be saying, have you ever heard of Park Lane? Well, Park Lane's actually manufactured by the people that manufactured American Crafts AC cardstock, okay? Um, the, the thinner, the better usually for these um, it, because you're going to be layering them, you know? So just be aware of that. So what I did was I found this image in Design Space. And again, I it's from Cat Madeira. It took me a while to find it. So I just want to tell you again, if you want, you can either look up Cat Madeira or you can um, use the image number, which is M47016BA5. Or if you don't want to even deal with that, just go to my profile in Design Design space, you know, I've got a lot of profile images, a lot of pro projects here. Um, and you'll see here, there's the B square, B square card. Uh, I have to rename it because we also did uh, the shadow box, okay? So all I did here was I took the image, which I is at eight inches, and I'm going to be using an eight inch shadow box frame. Um, and then I went over here and I duplicated it right here, up there. That middle thing is duplicate, okay? But I decided I wanted to make a card like my friend Nancy did. So I've got it and I'm going to resize it to, I believe I did it five inches. So over here, up by the size, I just typed in five. Now it's a square, so five will, it will be five by five. In this case, it's 4.999, so no big deal. So I wanna use this on the front of the card and I wanna create this other card um, uh, for, for the inside, right? So all I did was go over to shapes and I grabbed a square and um, I'm going to unlock the square. Now I want a card. So that means the card has to be when it's opened, right? If it's five inches on the front, when it's open, it's going to be 10 inches across, five inches tall. So we're going to unlock that. And for width, we're going to type in 10 and then for height. Now it's important that you unlock the square. Okay. Um, and you're going to do five here. Okay, so that is actually going to be the square. I'm going to change it to white so you can see what I do next. All right, 
sort of white. It's kind of off white. But anyway, now we need a score line. So to do a score line, we're going to go back to shapes. And the very top shape is not really a shape. It is a line. It's a score line. So you can see here is my score line. I'm going to stretch it to five inches. I can do that here or by the, you know, by stretching it. And now I want to select both the score line and the card, and I'm going to do an align center. And that's so that I can fold my card and it will be equal sized. Um, on each side will be equal size. So we're going to go ahead and attach that. When you attach it, you do it down here. Okay. And um, now the score line is attached to the base of the card. Um, and then I was like, what should I put in here? Obviously, I'm not going to put the same thing that Nancy put in there because this was directed towards me. So this is your place to personalize it. But if you just want to do what I did, I just did a text box and I typed in. All right, let me get my thing here. I typed in B yourself. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things with this text image. So there's be yourself. And I'm going to go up here where the fonts are. All right, I'm going to click on that because it comes up. The original is Cricut Sans. So we're going to click on that. And I have on my fonts a number of bookmarks. So I am going to choose something that I know has a writing style so I can use a pen. So in this case, I think I used, I think I used this one, Bat, BFC Backyard Garden, but I'm not sure. Actually, you know what? I didn't use that one. I used one that had upper and lowercase letters because I like that. And here, 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 where's one that I like that is upper and lowercase uh, Santa's toy box. Let's try that one. So once you've chosen that, you're going to go to style and choose writing. And I don't like the way that it looks because it's a bubble letter. All right. And some people like the bubble letter. I don't. So I'm going to go back <laughs> and choose, uh, something else. Oh, I love this DJ flirt. And that's so cute because it has little hearts on it. Okay. So be yourself and make sure you go ahead and select and attach them. Now, if you don't want to use your pens or you want something that looks a little more refined, what you can do is go over to your uh, images right here on the left and you could type in something like be yourself and see if you get something uh, that pops up. And I think there there is a there was one that I really liked. This one's cute, but um, I wanted one that was just one color. And choose yourself, be yourself, be cool, be nice. Well, I can't see the one that I want. I thought I saw one. Busy as a bee, beautiful. Oh, look at these ones with the little dots. Very cute. Um, and I saw one that was in like a script style and I thought that I put it in my, in my, uh, espresso yourself. Interesting. Be yourself. There it is. Be yourself. This is by Jolly Little Prince SVG. So let's add that to the canvas. Now, if you don't want the extra bees in there, all right, so there's be yourself. Um, if you don't want the extra beads in there, which you could, you could put them in. That'd be kind of cute. But you can always um, ungroup this and just choose. And we get rid of these two, uh, the white and the and the yellow. And then we can contour out those bees if we wanted to just by clicking on them. All right. So there's Be Yourself, and then you could cut this out in vinyl if you wanted to, but just make sure you're resizing it so that it works with your card, okay? So there it is, working with your card. Okay, now, to cut these out, whether you're doing the card or you're doing the shadow box, so let's look at, um, oh, I'm going to get rid of this one, and I'm going to hide this. All right. 
So to cut these out, I'm gonna group this and hide it. All right, I didn't do that right. Group and hide. All right, so to cut these out, what you need to do, I think, this is how I do it, is when I'm going to make it, I, I go, I hit make it. Then I look at all of the mats. So you see on the left-hand side, these are the mats that you're gonna need to make one eight by eight inch shadow, uh, shadow box image. So you'll see here, there are actually um, one, two, three, four different color yellows. And uh, so I had to go through my stack and look for different color yellows. Some of them are just slightly different, but it's not gonna matter because we're gonna, we're going to um, layer them all, okay? So then you hit uh, continue. And I personally, because of the nature of say this wing, the wing part here, I cut this on cardstock for intricate cuts. And, um, and then I peeled it off very, very gently, um, from, from, uh, from the mat. Okay. So I'm going to take you down here. We're not going to cut anything out. It takes a while to cut out. You guys know how to cut things out. So, um, here we go. So here's my card and here is my shadow box. Now you could do a couple of things with it, but this is the shadow box that, um, that I chose to use. It's a little dirty. I have to clean the glass a little bit, but you, to open it up, there are these little tabs on the back. You see these tabs right here? And don't use your fingers to do that because it gets like you are, it hurts if you use your fingers. I don't know, maybe you can try it, but I always use my, my uh, scissors and then I just lift them up like this all around. And then I turn around gently and sort of pop out all the contents. And you actually do not need this part for what we're doing right now, okay? And then you'll see here that we've got also this, which is a spacer. Now, it depends if you're going to use um, something called uh, pop dot. I call them pop dots, but really they are foam with adhesive on both sides. And I thought that I would do that, but I don't know how this piece is going to work out. Um, so... So we'll see how it works out in the end, okay? So let's take all of our pieces here and we'll see. This is how it's gonna go together. Now, if you get messed up, which I did, okay? I did get messed up even after cutting this many times. If you get messed up on how the layers are supposed to go, go back to your original um, image, and let's just, I want to just show you, let me bring you back up here just so you can see what I'm talking about. So um, here is the original image. If you get messed up, like where does that yellow one go? Just ungroup it and then just kind of fan out your layers. So here's the black. So black is on top and then the yellow with the round things that's going to be for the center of the flowers. Then the yellow then the green, and then you've got your honeycombs, okay? So I messed up because I had this yellow one um, below the white one when I was first putting this together. So I had to come back and look at my layers. So here are my layers then, okay? Now, when you cut them out, I would do your best. I, I suggest you do your best to keep them all uh, facing upwards because... Sometimes when you cut these things out, if one of these layers got turned, and I'm gonna show you in a second. So there is the top three. They fit real nicely, and then you have the, the uh, green, right? But if this layer gets turned, so this layer gets turned like this, you will be like, be like, hitting your head against the wall. Or if you do like I did, if you do it on the wrong side, it won't line up the correct way, okay? So just be careful to keep them all facing up and I hope I just did that right, facing up. And no, that's not right. Which one did I turn? This one? 
<laughs> I'm confusing myself, you guys. Okay. I think that's, nope. Uh, I had it right the first time, and then I wanted to get all fancy. See, and I don't know if that's right. That appears to be right. Okay. So this is your bottom layer. So you're going to just, before you start gluing or even putting it together with the foam tape, definitely do this and get it all straight in your mind or else you're going to drive yourself crazy. Okay. Now there are all my layers. There's my base piece. And if I wanted to, which I want to show you how it's done, I would basically start from the back. Now this piece is going to just go here. You can glue it if you want. I don't ever glue it. And then I'm going to take my foam squares. I have two different sizes and it's really important when you're using these that they don't show through. So you're going to definitely need uh, to either cut them or um, get the smaller size as it gets closer to the um, to the top piece, which will be very thin. Okay. So I'm putting on these little foam dots like this. And uh, one here. And then if I need the smaller ones, which I think I'm gonna need for this in the corner, I would put them here. Now don't make the mistake, if you are using the foam dots, don't make the mistake of um, just putting them around the edges because you do need to support the middle part of the paper right and if you just put it on the edges uh over time it might collapse and not look the way that you want it to look so there is that first layer let's go ahead and um where's the next layer did i do this is the next layer i had it wrong okay so this is the next layer and i kind of work like it's a book and i do this because it makes it easier for me. And as you can see, it's easy to get mixed up with your layers, all right? And um, let's see. Did you know that I love bees? I love, love, love bees. Bumblebees especially, because I just love them. They're, do you know that aerodynamically, um, no, it, scientists have studied them and aerodynamically they're not supposed to fly and yet they do yet they do and so it's just like kind of a miracle of nature um or perhaps you if you're of the thought that it is the designed which i am um that it's a it's a beautiful design uh they just look like little aircraft carriers and i just love them uh, okay, and also that the population of bees is dwindling, and so I think this is the perfect project to do in May, since in May you're not supposed to mow your lawn, um, and I have not mowed, or I haven't had my lawn mowed for a long time, so it is getting really uh, tall, but I did notice yesterday when we were in the garden, yes, I was in the garden, that my peonies, I think, are going to pop this weekend. I did have um, my beloved Santo uh, stake them for me, and he and Owen were out in the garden uh, yesterday pulling up some weeds and everything so that when they do pop, they look fabulous they're gonna look fabulous i don't have to do much uh with these pe these peonies all i do is stake them every year so that they will um stay up because they're the old-fashioned peonies there are new peonies nowadays these are old-fashioned they've been at this house probably for a hundred years uh because when i got here there was one bush and then i um, actually, my mother got down on her hands and knees and uh, dug out the peony roots. They're like tubers. And she dug them out and she started to like put them in different places. And that was tw almost, I was thinking about that this morning. It was almost 25 years ago when I first came to live here in this house. So you see, um, I'm actually cutting little bits here and... Perhaps this is this is the long way to do it, but for me, it helps 
in my brain on how to do it. So this is how I'm doing it. Um, anyway, so my bees, I went out to the garden yesterday and um, I have milkweed as well, which is a new thing to my garden. But milkweed attracts pollinators, especially uh, butterflies. So bees and butterflies, my favorite monarch I love the bumblebees and I love the monarch butterflies. Um, but milkweed is also one of those. It doesn't look so great, but I have it in my garden because I want to attract um, I want to attract those pollinators. It, it's kind of like it looks almost like a little swamp and it is called milkweed, you know, so consider that. But um, it has like these little pods at the end of the season and they open up and they spread all their little, you know, those little, I don't know what they are. They're like seeds, but they have wings on them. <laughs> what do you call them? Like almost like a dandelion has, you know, the seed. And speaking of dandelions, don't pull those out. Those are also the first, um, the first food for bees. Did you know that? I know a lot of people don't like dandelions, but actually dandelions are really healthy for you. And if you don't, um, if you don't treat your lawn, which I do not, if you don't treat your lawn, you can actually take the dandelion leaves and make yourself some tea. It's very good. It's also excellent for making uh, like salves for your for your uh, skin. And I have done that. Made soap, dandelion soap. You can also make dandelion iced tea if you don't like a hot tea. Uh, there you go. All right. So the last one up here, which we're trying to get to, the last one here, to be honest, what I would do is I would probably not do the foam tape because I don't want people to see it when they're looking at it. So I would probably either glue it or in my opinion, I think you can just lay it down, okay? So let's go ahead and turn this over again. And there is our first thing. So we're gonna go here, I'm gonna get my weeding tool and I'm going to take this part off. So you see how it's double stick? So you have to take the other side of that double stick off. Ah, come on. Yesterday I got in the mail. Don't you love it when you order something, you forget you ordered it? Because, <laughs> you know, like it was on sale or something. And then it comes in, it's like a second surprise. I just love that. So I got from Echo Park Paper Company a whole box of stickers and papers like collection kits they call them all right all right while well, you barking um and they have de uh, decorative brads and this whole box i'm gonna have to uh I'm going to have to open it around you, but it's huge because I think I placed several orders and they just combined them together to save money on shipping or something. I don't, most companies do not do that, but they happen to. Anyway, Echo Park Paper Company, if you're not familiar, is, uh, is a company. They're also out of Utah. I don't know why everybody's out of Utah that that's into scrapbooking. I think because of the Mormons, uh, the Mormons love to... Uh, celebrate their history and I think scrapbooking sort of like the modern form of scrapbooking I think everybody's done scrapbooking you know up to now but um, the Mormons kind of turned it into a, a hobby a big hobby so uh, you see a lot of people uh, coming out of Utah and if by the way you forgot a little piece like right here I kind of forgot uh, oh and over here what am I thinking oh I might have to cut it um, anyway Echo Park Paper Company is actually named after a city in California called Echo Park and um, they make the cutest little uh, collection kits so a collection kit is a group of papers uh, and other doodads 
that you can use if you are, for instance, going to Disney World or you have a little boy or a little girl or you want to do a, an outline for paper for um, Christmas, like you want to make a scrapbook for Christmas. But um, I don't do the scrapbooking anymore. I did at one time, but my kid grew up too fast and I did, I have lots of pictures. I just didn't scrapbook them all. Maybe when I'm old and gray, I'll do it. Um, when he has kids of his own, won't that be great? And so here I am. Anyway, so I use the collection kits to make cards because they're just so beautiful. They have lovely patterned paper with them and uh, usually a thing of stickers comes with them too and so when they go on sale I usually buy them all sometimes I buy them more than once and that's what happened they had a big old sale and I got a big huge box of everything in the mail yesterday I'm having trouble with this little guy okay let's try, see if he'll stay on there foam tape uh -huh. Did I take off? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. There we go. Now I'm lining these all up. Now, by the way, you do not need to use foam tape if you don't want to. You can just use them flat. And if you are going to use them flat, I would just not even use any uh, glue at all. Okay? And you see what I mean about it starting to get to be 3D? <laughs> um, so it's starting to get 3D. Now, if you decide, oh, this is too much, I'm just going to do the rest in flat, you could certainly do that. Um, you don't, you're not obligated to do them all in 3D. So you might want to like make the, um, the, the honeycomb and the, uh, the flowers look 3D, but you want the B to sort of be flat, which is uh, B flat. But, <laughs> but um, there you go. You could do that by not using your foam on all of those pieces. Now for the card, um, you will probably need to not use the foam. Or if you do use the foam, you're going to need a very thick envelope. And I'll show you that in a second. This takes a little longer than I wanted it to, but it's okay. We're here. It's almost the weekend. Um, speaking of the weekend, uh, my friend Mary over at SVG Cuts is, uh, she just offered this guide to using your Cricut. It seems to me like a lot of people are doing that these days. Um, and I make the assumption you guys know how to do the basics of Cricut. So if you want to, uh, learn the ins and outs of, of your machines, um, you might want to go over there. She's offering a free guide to learn how to use your Cricut. Plus there's a free file involved and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Okay. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right. And... Then here comes this. And just so you can see how it's starting to look. You see how it's it's got this. Like this. It's going to look beautiful in our frame. But as I was saying, so here's our frame. And here is the spacer. Now I haven't finished this all the way up. But you could decide you don't want the spacer in there. Um, because you're going to put the foam foam. Uh, paper, foam, foam, adhesive foam. Get it out, Rita. I haven't talked this much for over a month. Um, okay, so this is what we're doing. You know, I, I wonder if, hmm, I wonder if you could just leave the foam tape there. It is attached. Huh, look at that. Let's see how it looks on the other side. Be aware of these little things. Oh, I got to tell you about my cardinal. Okay, so there's no spacer in there. If you put the spacer in there, I think it would kind of squish everything. Um, so it's up to you if you want to put the spacer in there. I'm going to choose not to. 
for this. So yesterday when we were in the garden, ugh, I keep getting back to this story. So I'm not going to put spacers. Let's see how this looks without the spacers. Eh, it moves around a little bit more, but oh, isn't it adorable? Put this on my thing. Uh, let's see with the spacer. Um, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, so I have a cardinal. If you guys know, um, I have a cardinal, a male cardinal. Uh, cardinals are very red, you know, and um, it's kind of funny because I was watching the St. Louis Cardinals uh, play baseball last night, and they were just doing so well. Uh, they had like four home runs in a row. But anyway, so I have this cardinal that comes. And if you are, you know, a spiritual person, you may have heard that when cardinals appear, um, your loved ones are near. And so every time I see this cardinal, every early spring or it's like late winter, every time I see this cardinal, I get so excited because it's red. And my dad's favorite color was red always looked good in red and I heard that thing about the cardinal so I was like oh it's my dad coming to visit me and whether or not you believe that I, I you know it's up to you but whenever I see my my cardinal I call him my cardinal so um he comes every spring and then I don't see him usually after after that I'm sure he's hanging around anyway this past year before uh before I went to the hospital, I saw a mama cardinal, which is not as pretty. It was kind of funny because the, the mamas um, and the stripes are missing here because I, I cut them and I put them somewhere. I can't find them. But anyway, this is this is what it would look like as a shadow box. Doesn't that look cute? And that is with all of the foam. Anyway, so yesterday, I'm going to do the card now. So yesterday, I was in the garden, peonies. I wasn't doing any work. Don't worry about that. My boys were doing it. And um, I saw a baby cardinal on the top of the garage. And he was like, just going tweet, tweet, like just kind of like, a, like, hey, look at me. I'm alive, you know, kind of thing. It was so cute. And um, he still had like fuzz on him. He was, he was only barely red. Could have been a girl, I don't know. But it was sitting there and it was like just tweeting at the top of the garage and it just wouldn't stop. It was just like tweet, tweet. And I think he was looking for his mama. So um, so I'm like, don't worry, your mama's gonna be back or your papa. And um, and then just a few minutes later, doesn't mom come back? And she fly, he flew over to the tree and he. you could tell he was a baby because he couldn't really fly very well. He was like, sort of like, it was kind of fun. It was like very animated. Anyway, so now we have a cardinal family, and hopefully we'll get more. I just love them. I love them. My other favorite one is a chickadee. Um, I did at one time have a bunch of chickadees that would eat from my hand, um, and they were just so fabulous, but I don't know. I think I had a cat once uh, named Tigger, and she liked to hunt uh hunt birds she was a bird hunter and then i never saw the i never saw the, the chickadees again but they're so adorable chickadees um i believe chickadee is my state flower um, my state bird my state's representative bird because in massachusetts is the chickadee they're so adorable and their call is Chickadee dee 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 dee. That's how you know it's a chickadee because he says chickadee dee 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 dee. I know I'm rambling, you guys, but <laughs> so here we go. I'm putting I'm putting this together. You see, if I did a foam tape on this one, can you imagine how thick it would be? You need a very thick envelope. As it is, you're gonna have a kind of thick front, which is why I put the back like there. I didn't want too much thickness there um but uh, it's not as thick as when we're doing like anna griffin layered cards because those have most of the paper preserved these are just little bits so and i want to thank my friend nancy again 
You missed my story. Okay. Yeah. So my chickadees, I haven't seen them in a while, but my, my cardinals came back now. So last night after all of that, Santo and I were watching, uh, he likes baseball. He has a brother that, um, was in the major leagues, but he is no longer there. It was a little while ago. And so he like he just likes to watch baseball. Plus he's Dominican, so you know what that means. Dominicans love baseball. And so we were watching the Cardinals versus the Dodgers. And I was just like, look at those beautiful red, uh those beautiful red uh, um, uh, they had white, white uniforms and red on the uniforms with the Cardinals. This was so cute. And they were doing really well. But so as we we're watching, Santo said, do you remember a few years ago? Because, um, you know, I live in, it, it's, it's a pretty well-established neighborhood. But the thing is, we do get wildlife. And a lot of people are afraid of these, these wildlife. They don't know what to do with them. Well, a couple, for a couple of years, we had these uh, turkeys. And first of all, turkeys in the wild do not look anything like the turkeys that they show you as pictures on Thanksgiving. They're pretty ugly looking birds. I mean, they're pretty ugly. And only the males of the tops are big feathers, you know, and they generally move together as a flock. So you'll get one tom and you'll get, uh, you'll get the a bunch of the, yeah, he's got a little harem there or something. So anyway, um, we had, we had a bunch of them and I don't know if it was a kid that scared them or whatever. They were across the street and, um, they flew, which I didn't even know they could fly, but, um, they flew and they jumped on top of my roof. They have a fairly flat, like roof, it's kind of like, I forget what it's called. It's like a hip roof, I think it's called. So it's pretty flat. And um, and they jumped up there. And my son, he was really young at the time. So like it had to be around, I don't know, eight or nine. And he just thought that was so funny um, that they were up there. And I was really actually impressed because I'm like, wow, those guys can fly. Because they generally don't, at least when I see them, they generally aren't flying. Um, and they just sort of walk around sort of briskly. I just did this wrong. You guys, I did it wrong. Ah, thank God it's still there. I have to check to see this. Anyway, that was really fun. And Sancho reminded me of that. You remember the time? I think you even got a picture of the, of the, um, turkeys on the roof. And the, uh, this actual, one of the turkeys in Peabody, they actually had to call the wildlife preserve because he was down in the square. <laughs> he was down in the square, like practically directing traffic, like, like uh, Frosty the snowman. And everybody, of course, has to wait for that to, for him to get out of the way. So they had to call like the, the animal control from, uh, we have a lot of that. Actually, where I stayed in rehab, uh, which was at the Cumming Center in Beverly. Last year, they had a seal that came up through um, through the Tidal River and came into Shoe Pond. And um, Shoe Pond is in, uh, in the Cumming Center. And they call it Shoe Pond because it used to be a giant, like it's called United Shoe, this giant shoe manufacturing uh, business. They went out of business. And when I was a kid, they were, I think they were already out of business when I was a kid. And so they took the, um, the buildings and they gutted them and turned them into like a business park, which is really cool. And they had like a, a regular little water thing. Um, and they called it shoe pond. So last year, I kind of wish I was in rehab last year instead of this year, because last year didn't a title, uh, didn't a seal come up Big one, not a little baby seal, a big seal um, came up through the tidal rivers because you know we're near the ocean and started swimming in Shoe Pond. And everyone's like, is that a seal in Shoe Pond? And, and um, so eventually people got a little too crazy, I think. And then they called animal rescue and they took them out of there, right? 
and they put him back in the ocean because they didn't think he was lost. They just thought he was having a little fun and they put him in the ocean. Well, don't you know, he returned, he returned um, and he was in the pond. And so he decided when he was finished, he was going to go, which there's a police station now in front of a coming center. And he, he got out of the pond. It was at night, got out of the pond and made his way over to the police station where they called the animal rescue and took him to, uh, took him to the, to the ocean but it was just so funny and I'm like is that you pond when I was in rehab they're like it sure is and uh, it was I think it was on the national news anyway they called him Schubert Schubert I don't know why that's what the people decided to call him so his name was Schubert and he visited the Beverly Shoe Pond it was just really cute all right so comparing there's my card versus uh Nancy's and Nancy made hers a little bit bigger let's see what size hers hers is like a five and a half mine's a five inch one but I think I kind of like Nancy's better because it has that gold in there um but it's just really a cute card be yourself and let's have a look at this that turned out well, but I have to cut the um, stripes. But I think it turned out well, don't you? And I suppose I could put Be Yourself right under here. Yeah, maybe I'll do that and I'll put it just on the glass. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Um, you guys, I can't see the comments uh, too well. But I want to just make one last little pit stop so you can see what I was talking about. Maybe you can try it this weekend. I haven't tried it yet. Glitter. Glitter would work. Glitter. Oh, yeah. Glitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the B-square card. I'm going to save it. And you guys know where to pick it up. I told you where to pick it up, right? So let's head on over to the Internet. And we're going to go here to SVG Cuts. Now, SVG Cuts is a beautiful, beautiful um, website. She makes the most intricate, gorgeous, very feminine. Um, those are some masculine stuff. Uh, designs, mostly 3D. And uh, she has this new design space guide, which probably in a few months will be outdated. But what I... I like about this is that you get this free um, free SVG in there. You see that? That's your SVG. There's your SVG. It's a little purse. So I'm going to add it to my bag, and I have to log in. Oops, sorry. That was my shadow box. And um, let's see. Did I add it? Did I add it? No, it's not added. Home. Go here. Where's my free SVG? Free guide add it to my bag. Okay, I'm going to check out and I'm just going to continue. There's nothing is required for me. I don't have to pay anything. I'm going to place the order. And once I do that, I'm going to get here. And this is where I'm going to download it. So let's hit download and let's go have a look at that download. Um, here it is. So it's zipped. I got to click on it so it unzips. There it goes. And then here's the PDF. Although I don't see that guide here. Why don't I see that guide? Ah, come on. I thought she said it was in here, the uploading. I'm going to have to go ask her. Anyway, if you need to understand the download, upload, unzipping, zipping sort of contents, this is a great little guide. Um, and there's even mention of her uh, assembly video, which she has on YouTube, and she does a great job. I wish that there was an SVG in with this, though. Why is there no SVG? To design your, yeah. Okay, let's go back here and free guide. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. That, I thought you got the free SVG. Anyway, it's worth it to look at, uh, at uh, Mary's SVG. She makes gorgeous ones. She makes things that are big, like um, buildings. So if you look under houses and structures, you'll see she makes she made this beautiful. Let's just have a look at this. Look at that house. Oh, my God. You know what I think it is? Um, I think it is a... Uh, 
replica of the what is the home alone house that's what i would call this the home alone house very beautiful and look it even has a little porch with the tree on the side uh, so pretty but she also has like churches this light this uh lighthouse and keepers uh, building we've done this before so pretty in fact i gave that to a girlfriend um you have seagulls in the parking lot <laughs> not oh you have penguins no not enough for penguins penguins i th thought are like in the south no i don't know anyway so i have talked a lot i am so glad you're with me still um i wanted to tell you i I was saying I was going to try to go for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I looked at my calendar and I do have to go to um, to the clinic, to the cancer center, uh, and get a treatment on Monday morning. So I won't be able to do Monday morning uh, unless I do it afterwards. And mm, it's kind of so. I think I'll just do Tuesday uh, and Wednesday, Friday of next week. I think. <laughs> Yeah, my stories, my stories. Um, so, yeah. And my, my little baby cardinals, my little baby cardinals. Cardinal. I guess they only have one. I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. But anyway, I'll make sure I take pictures of the peonies. And uh, thank you, Connie. And also, um, and also... Oh, 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 Cheryl, I got your email. I got to tell you, I cried when I read it. It was so sweet. And um, and I hope that you all have a lovely weekend. It's supposed to be real nice over here. So I'm going to try to work on cleaning up my, and we're going to get through that box. Oh my God, I can't wait to look at that box. In fact, I think I'll go look at it. You want a picture of the baby cardinal? I'll try. I'll try. All right, everybody, enjoy your weekend and I'll see you back on Tuesday, okay? Um, and thank you, Jamie. So nice to see you too. Uh, and, and enjoy your weekend, whatever you do, whether you're out in your garden or you're cutting files or putting together something massive, um, enjoy, enjoy. Uh, and we'll see you again on Tuesday. Take care. Love you. Love you, Loretta. Love you. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye-bye.